Hey lovelies, this is Lexi and welcome to the Flirting with Travel podcast. Hi everybody, Bianca here. And I'm Misty. And so today we're talking a little bit about what life is going to be like flying now that we're living in a mid-COVID and the one day, hopefully, post-COVID world. The crisis is real. It really is. So on the last episode, Misty alluded to um, a fact in the article that I wanted to talk about today with you guys about traveling and how it will be different. We also talked about how travel changed post 9-11. How will travel change post COVID? How is it changing during COVID? Um, And I read an article that was saying you're going to have to get to the airport approximately four hours before your flight for domestic flights, not just international, domestic flights, which means that your TSA line is going to be longer because there's the social distancing that they have to adhere to. The things you can take through, like you were saying last episode about the um, hand sanitizer being the 12 ounces that you could take through. And I feel like for me, it's not going to be a problem because I like to get to the airport early and give myself time to get through security, get to my gate, possibly get food, because that is important while traveling, and um, just like ease of mind. I would rather get to the airport early and hang out in the lounge. So this four hour timestamp that they're talking about to be there doesn't phase me um, a bit. Also, my... Well, it should though. It means that now instead of getting there four hours early, you're getting there like eight hours early so okay. that you can do all this stuff. So I feel like that's just a... But you know what? <laughs> that's a really good point. That is will, That will change. So lounge memberships will probably increase because now we're mm-hmm. spending way more time in the airport than we ever have. I mean, like mm-hmm. I never get to the airport. I mean, more than like absolutely necessary. I have to live maybe an hour and a half. But... With that, priority pass is going to go up. A lot of the credit cards mm-hmm. who have membership um, capabilities attached to them, that will go up. The Centurion Lounge is going to be ridiculously packed again. I mean, just God willing that more people don't buy, like, clear and pre-check. Because right now, it's, we're at such a sweet spot going through Vegas. Like, you can just zoom through. I can get to the airport, like, an hour before my flight and just cruise in particularly in the Vegas airport because it's so good. I feel like because maybe that's home, I feel more, I would feel more comfortable doing that. But like when I'm flying out of Orlando, maybe because I have to find a parking space, cover the car, get the shuttle to the airport, um, get through uh, TSA, find the gate, check in. I don't know. I just, it, it feels like it's too much. It's too dicey. It's too much. I need extra time. So it's four hours wouldn't be so bad but they're talking about how it also affects like checked bags which you're your team carry on misty's pretty much team care misty it depends on where she's going though would you really call yourself a true team carry on is she is she's a fake team carry on <laughs> a fraud you're a fraud no i, um, I do i carry on about 75 percent of the time like when i come to the states apparently of course i'm going to carry a huge bag but most of the time it, anything that's under a seven day trip, I can try and pack into a carry on. You know what's weird though, is that you carry on when you go to the States, even though like you're coming home and you've got a full closet here. Like I could have raided your closet today and had like a full outfit. I have raided your closet by the way. But that's because I have a closet here as well. So I'm, I'm bringing things and back and then taking other things. I mean, but it's that's a whole thing. Some, no, you should be team carry on with that. If you have like set, you have bases around the world with closets, you don't need to, you have stuff. You should be team handbag. You're like, I right? just roll up there with my uh, team passport. Pack. That's all. <laughs> you know what? That is going to be, I want everybody to tune into our episode where we do, what is it? Lexi P333. What's the called? Oh, Project 333. So you're, you're narrowing down your entire wardrobe to 33 items, and this is going to include shoes, accessories, outerwear, and then like seasonal wear, like coats, gloves, or bathing suits. But you do that for three months. 
I'm not saying we do it for three months because I understand that's a challenge, especially for someone who's as a uh, all over the place on their wardrobe. But Look. like do it for 30 days. <laughs> the eye roll could not have been more exaggerated. I was trying. But we're gonna do that for 30 days. So we it's it's about a minimalist lifestyle. It's about mm -hmm. a capsule wardrobe. It's about understanding what you absolutely need. No, you just, you pick with intention and then you don't have to think about it. You just throw on your outfits because you know that every piece that you picked is a piece that you loved. Like when I Marie kondo my stuff, I loved it because everything I had was something that I truly loved and everything fit me well. I never put on anything and like, ugh, I gotta pull it this way and that way. Then I bought a bunch of other stuff and I'm like, why, why did I buy this? It doesn't bring me joy. It just cost me money, and now I it takes up space. It's costing me money Very twice, but now I've got to store it. Nevertheless, yeah. airport. So what but, what else is gonna change change at the airport? So we have four hours. Four hours. Lounge check in. Number the sanitation uh -huh. of the luggage, which we mm. checked bags on the way here, so I don't feel like that was too much. But then they're also talking about um, right now with the shorter delays or like less amount of people traveling. So are the delays gonna be shorter? Are the um, connection times gonna be shorter? How is that going to work out? How could connections but, I mean, how long does it take? Our connection on the aircraft has... Um, I don't know how each place does it. Like I know, you know, when I work, we will spray down, like it, it, you have to be methodical in the way that you clean from the very time the last person gets off the aircraft to the time they're going to send the new person down. Like you're, you're already working your butt off to get everything clean. So I'm sure they take that into account. If they have cleaners, maybe they, I don't think they would double the amount of people or I don't think they would add cleaners, like the amount of people that come on and clean the planes. But I don't know. All I know is we got off one aircraft, we walked over, we took the tram to the next um, gate, next terminal, we get onto the aircraft, they're already at like nine, group nine of nine. And we group literally, and we were in first class, so we're in the front of the plane. Which they were. She this needs is the first t-shirt that says, uh, do you think I fly economy too? And the answer is below <laughs> be yes. This was the so one Did you have masks time. on and did you have glass, gloves on? mask i wore a mask the entire time um they make you wear masks coming on um where are you going american mm. they make you wear masks coming on they and generally they don't make you keep them on while you're on the aircraft but mm -hmm. most people do like a majority of the people did there was one man that was sitting next to sam that was like smokers cough no mask functified <laughs> it just it didn't apply to him I feel like the reason that they can't make you keep a mask on is because how do you enforce it? Someone takes their mask off. Are you saying, hey, we're going to divert this plane or we're going to have law enforcement meet everyone who decides to take their mask off? Plus, how do you sell like food and beverage? Your they sales don't. are going to go down. They don't? They don't. They cut it. Wow. They, they gave you bags with um, a little bottle of water and a little snack, like um, little cookies or something like that. And that was all you got. They said, and they make announcements at the gate. We encourage you to go and get food before you get onto the aircraft because we're not selling anything. We are selling nothing. Again, I say to the people in the back. <laughs> like, they were so serious about it. And I was mad because we didn't have time to get at any airport. We didn't have time to get food. I was we're so serious about this food. Why don't you ever just show up to the airport or be fed? Because we wake up Wait. with enough time to like get dressed and go. Did the did the staff have on protective gear like the flight attendants? Yes, and they make announcements that say "Stay away from me." We're still trying to social distance and stuff. Um, Don't ask they, me no questions. Yeah, essentially, but in a very nice way. It, it felt very nice the the way they were <laughs> handling the situation. I didn't I didn't feel like you know ew ew back up. Because most people are already like that, especially at the airports, they're being, but most, I, masks, they had a lot of, um, the flight attendants were wearing gloves, but I didn't see a lot of people wearing gloves. Well, okay. That's I think still gloves small. are such a silly thing. Only yeah. Because if you talk to anyone in the medical community, they talk about how if they're wearing gloves, they wear it to do one thing. 
they take off the gloves and they throw them away because if you touch multiple things, you're cross contaminated. It's like when I see people going to the grocery store with gloves on, I'm like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Because they're touching all of their food, they're touching the cart, then they pull out their phone and they're touching mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, phone goes to the face. Yeah. So theoretically, if you're going to do this right, when you go home, you have to take all of your stuff, put it on a table, then you take it out, put it on one side of the table, disinfect everything that you're touching, take, or I'm sorry, take off your gloves, disinfect everything that you're touching, put it in a new spot, then sanitize the old spot. That's the only way that using gloves is actually effective. And I don't think most people are doing that. I think they're wearing gloves as a false sense of security. Instead, wash your hands. Exactly. For the 20 seconds. And then you can put on some sanitizer that didn't expire. Um, don't be an ass. <laughs> and, then, and, and then lotion. I don't think sanitizer expires. I'm really going to Google this. No, I think regular hand sanitizer does. I think the sanitizer that you might be making at home might expire. Again, if anyone didn't tell us in the last video, please tell us now. <laughs> does sanitizer that you make at home expire? We just... In fact, can you please also add your credentials? Let us know why you know it. If it's a good article or you just happen to work in the uh, medical field, right. A, you're a hero. B, let us know why it doesn't work. You if know, you another Etsy thing. And you're selling special hand sanitizer. Also comment below because you're making money off of something they're saying expires after 14 days. Hey, no, actually, they maybe. have a way of making it work. So another thing that is changing is how they scan your tickets how they interact with people, how are you checking in bags, um, trying to make it like as touchless as possible. When we mm -hmm. checked our bags in, we did touch the screen. I didn't see somebody dedicated to like wiping it down. So I was like, okay, maybe in the future they'll figure out how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Like they do in the grocery stores or like Target or store where they have like someone dedicated to wiping the carts down. Yeah. Maybe they'll have somebody like that for the airline. But um, they were talking about how airlines like Qatar or um, Qatar British Airways, sorry, not uh, Qantas, EasyJet and British Airways are using uh, biometrics to scan, like, to scan you onto the aircraft. American you right have to now, take your mask off to do your biometrics? Probably. Probably. Because when I was going through TSA, like, I had my mask on and they made me take it off so that they could verify... Um, KCM, they had to verify like my face or whatever and then like put it back on. So for the few seconds, I don't think they think it's going to be an issue. But when I went to scan my boarding pass, like you have to do it yourself. They're not touching it, even though the person is wearing mask and gloves, they're not touching mm -hmm. it. So they're trying to make it as touchless as possible. Well, it makes sense though. Because imagine you're wearing gloves and you just touch everyone's phone. The only person that's safe is you. Everyone else is still dealing with the germs from everybody else's right. Body. They're, I think this is going to force um, technology to, to develop it. a lot quicker because they're gonna they're going to have to figure out how to like mitigate these pitfalls in the process. So essentially, it's just going to be even more of a tedious process. And I don't know if that will curtail traffic or if people are going to be so ready to travel that as they do with, you know, things in place now, they just deal with it. I just I deal with it. Ready to travel. I, yeah. So, like, when you think about it, I don't know if it's actually going to slow it down. It'll slow it down for, like, 2020. But 2021, mm -hmm. any problems that people have with mobile boarding passes, and I mean airlines, they're going to get that fixed mm -hmm. so that you don't have to do paper boarding passes. They're probably going to do, like, contactless check bags. So you won't even be checking in in the front. You're just going to like run up there. I could actually see an airline saying, hey, have you checked in online? Oh, hop out of line, go check in, come back when you have your boarding pass, and then we'll take your bag. I can see that. Do you think that this will cut jobs, though, because yes. of all of the different measures? They're going to, the people, they don't need, like, personnel there if they're going to do everything electronically, right? Well, no, I think jobs are going to change. So the jobs are going to move from being customer facing to being like, imagine that you have to do that. You're now going to need more people manning your kiosk. And I don't mean like walking up and saying, Hey, do you have help? You're going to need more developers. You're going to need more people that are cleaning.
that's really where jobs are going to go. It's going to go to back of house to make everything work. Mm -hmm. This is true. That's going to change the landscape of the economy because it's like, you know, this is, this was my job for the last 15 years, grabbing the bags, doing this, doing that. And now if you want to stay with the company, you have to retrain, cross train into something else because that's the way I definitely you know. That's so true. Yeah. Because that's the way the world works. Like people talk about like, oh, going to the grocery store, if you use self-checkout, you're taking someone's job. It's like, no, you're giving someone else a job. Someone had true. to divine or sorry, uh, develop those self-checkout machines. Someone has to maintain those machines. But they still have a person manning that area because yeah. you still need it. We were in Target, man, and I had two gift cards I was trying to use. And I was like, oh, you don't need to scratch off the back. Like, I don't know why they put that on there. Do you need to scratch it off if you can just scan it? Well, you have to scan it. Then you have to, like, scratch off that other part, put the numbers in, and then you. Mm -hmm. I, I can see me struggling. But Sam was like, why isn't this? I'm putting the code in. Why isn't it working? So the lady that was manning the self-checkout area, you know, came over and was showing us, like, how to do it and, like, what to type in and whatnot. So I can see how you're saying it would change the yeah. jobs but you know you're going to get pushback on that because people are going to be like i don't want to there's there's an unwillingness to do that it'll only last so long because it's going to change consumers because say that gift card yeah. i have target gift cards i put them into my target app and when i get up to the front i just scan my uh my phone i need to i think well and that's what living overseas i'm like huh you could i, I do have the app and i i have started using it when the little Starbucks guy showed me how to use it. Oh, he's such a sweetheart. He's like, Oh, you know, you can get this deal and get this coffee with this much off. And, but it's, it's definitely going to change travel. So I think my job is safe. Um, <laughs> you can't really but, automate a flight attendant. Right. Only because I know oh, some people call them like waitresses in the sky. I've heard someone say they're just a cocktail waitress in a plane. <laughs> and like, yeah. until something goes wrong and then they're there for your safety. Suddenly, you call on them in an emergency, and they're not a they're not a cocktail waitress in the sky. You know what? I think the only people that feel that way are either going to be people who never ever fly, or super crazy frequent flyers that just are demeaning in nature. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think they're like extremely necessary um, personnel. But yeah, I, I, I was know. reading another article. It was talking about it was ranking the different airlines in terms of profitability now during this whole thing. And I think my airline was towards the top, the top? but Delta, it was the top. Was Did you read that one? Yeah. Where Delta was like number eight or something. 11. It, it, was, 11. it was like just above um, Spirit and oh, Spirit. Was there was another one. No, I, but I, you know I, that, I, that I, article stated that the legacy carrier, uh, what they think one of the legacy carriers in the U.S. is going to go out of business. Well, their business models are not designed to perform in this environment. They were working because they had so many flights. So imagine like your flights oversold, you get bumped from one flight, you get moved to the next flight. But now imagine that you're like, go back like a couple years when you were platinum on Delta. And mm -hmm. that was like your life. Imagine you get somehow bumped from a Delta flight and you're like, hey, we don't have any other flights because we've had to cancel all of our long haul flights. We don't have something for five days. You're like, do you know who I am type situation? <laughs> that's, and that's, they're going to have a lot of customers that are saying that. Airlines well, I mean, even Qantas mm -hmm. was about to, Qantas two years ago was filing bankruptcy because they couldn't stay yeah. in business. British Airways, 25% of them is owned by Qatar Airways, because Qatar is heavily subsidized by their government. Emirates is able to survive because they're heavily subsidized by one of their sheikhs as well. As I mean, so it's not a, it. They don't have sustainable business models. If the the airline that you are, because um, you said your loyalty, um, so <laughs> wouldn't that suck if the airline that you are you have all these points with and you're just the top tier? went out of business and you had to start again, you would cry. Oh. But this I will, mean, this every will teach you how to, to develop new travel hacks. Yeah. Well, okay, on that tip, we're going to say that we have um, travel hacks coming up, Travel 101, basically how to get your points and build it up 
very I don't know though because you're right every year you have to restart anyway though every year I have to redo my my membership and you change your statuses so if I was to leave the Middle East Qatar Airways would not be my number one I actually don't really did you like American Airways airline American Airlines when you flew it because that's like part of one world and that's who I'm part of I I did because they I liked the frequency of the flights Mm-hmm. There was always something to get on, and so it just helped ease my anxiety when um, non revving. But when they took it away, I'm like, okay, it just forces you to to do something different. I don't know that I love any one airline particularly, and if I do, it's only because I have a good um, record track record with them of getting on the mm-hmm. flights. Otherwise, a plane is a plane is a plane is going to get me there, and I'm worried about, you know, what I'm going to do when I get to where I'm going, not I only travel on American. I do feel like that's what non-rev does to you, because I yeah. couldn't tell you one airline that I legitimately love. It's just, it's just what it is. they're just a means to an end. They're getting me to my destination. So I would no, say Delta, I'm probably one. You said Delta no. has the most newest planes in America. American Airlines planes, I don't know if they you don't get out of your head yet. Delta might be at the damn uh, bankruptcy. Delta flies out of business. Babies. Calm it down. In fact, the only true. reason they're not flying not. in the 80s is because 90% of their fleet is grounded. Oh, fact check. Oh, my no, job. 90% of their fleet is grounded, but one, they have solvency, and two, Delta, the metrics that your little airline got to the top on was just based off of baggage. And most of the time, because they charge so much for you guys to check bags on that airline. That did, don't you dare. That was straight disrespect. That was. I needed my sunglasses. No, oh, you needed. No, that was just, yeah. Why did she just, like, lean back, like, I said what I said? She did. She put up full gangster so ring on that. You ain't got no coup. I'm just no respect. But I'm just saying respect the facts name. speak for themselves. All right, there's a list for a reason, and if we're number one, don't at me. Sorry, <laughs> not you. Like she knows, I hate that stuff. I, I mean, I really feel like would you rather is is about to come into play. Would because... you rather be at the bottom of the list or the top? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> would you rather okay misty you go first would you rather get oh no 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 mm-mm, mm, wait <laughs> why is she looking for a good one would you rather be stuck on a seven hour delay or turn up at the airport and realize your flight is tomorrow oh i'd be pissed i would rather oh i'd rather the seven hour delay because either way I just, you might as well just go with it. Unless you really want to be at your destination, and then i come back. Okay. Lexi. Yes. Would you rather be left behind in the bush on an African safari, or be <laughs> left behind, this should have been Misty's, or be left behind in the water on a scuba trip? Oh, man. <laughs> oh. On a, ooh. That is a tough question, only because I feel like in an African safari, you know there's going to be a mosquito, there's some flies. I would actually rather drown. <laughs> you would rather run out of air underneath the water than to be bit by a mosquito. I'm sorry, have I gotten a malaria shot? If you're going there, yeah. I it's have. Part of the, I don't, you and know yellow what, fever. Still, the water. I would actually rather get stung by a jellyfish than have to live with flies buzzing by my ear. Unless, unless <laughs> we're in Tanzania and I happen to maybe get to see a meerkat. That would be the only reason why I would take that. Because then the wildlife in Africa is no joke. Even like the friendly zebras will stomp your ass. I just know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Misty, this is a good one for you. Would you rather join the Mile High Club and get arrested because of it, or never join the Mile High Club at all? Life is to be lived with stories to be told. I'd rather join the Mile High Club and be arrested than to never experience it at all. Get arrested and put in the uh, Turkish prison. 
<laughs> I'll take First a 40 all, slap ew. for my feet. I am judging your YOLO ass right now. Ew, that's dirty. Airplane bathrooms oh. are not clean. Okay. It could be the seat. You could do first class in the seat. Qatar Airways has suites, so does Singapore Airways. I mean, it could be first class. Okay. Lexi, would you rather sleep in a hostel that smells like Jabba the Hutt's breath, but is otherwise clean, or <laughs> stay at a fancy hotel that only changes the sheets if they're stained? My God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, I thought for sure it was going to be the second one because when you said hostel, I was like, obviously anything else. But no, oh. Okay, oh. I'm sorry, read that one more time. Okay. Would you rather sleep in a hostel that smells like Jabba the Hutt's breath, but is otherwise clean? Now, Jabba the Hutt is big, he nasty, he smelly, he looks like nastiness. Or would you rather stay in a fancy hotel that only changes the sheets if they're stained? You know, my sense of smell is pretty bad, so I guess I'm going to have to go with that. Oof. That is rough. What, what would you go with? I would go with the first one. Definitely. The sheets of the stain. People are gross, and that's gross. But. Yeah. All right. So now we know, I guess. Stay tuned. <laughs> and everybody, feel free to answer the questions below, and we'll, we'll bring that up and just see what the, what the consensus is. Um, but I guess we're gonna, we're gonna see how travel ends up with Corona, what, how it changes, what developments are made and adapt to changes. It's been lovely talking to y'all. We'll see you on another episode. Fairly well. Bye.